Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. And today I have another one of my dear friends by the incredible name, Kevin Mananga. I trust that I said his name right. If I didn't, he will let me know very clearly. But I want you to know something that as a way to introduce this guest, um, you know, you've got people in your life, right? And you don't you don't remember particularly the day or the hour that where you met them, but they kind of just appear in your life. And God just has a, a powerful way of planting certain people in your life at the right time for the purposes of them being an encouragement to you and you being an encouragement to them. And I thank God for this man who has just been a dear friend, someone who understands my my sarcastic behavior at times, someone who I enjoy eating food with, serving alongside in youth ministry with, and even getting to watch him, how he so well, how he ministers to people, prays with people, prays for people. And I really believe that over the course of this podcast episode today, that you're really going to get to know the heart behind Kevin and, and what the Lord has done and is doing in his life. Kevin, my man, it is an honor to have you on the Hope Sessions podcast. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm all good. First time for an Irish to say my name right. So all good. Praise God for that. Like um, yeah. I'm keeping well, you know, so God is good and you're in, he's in control. So yeah. yeah. It was quite nervous, man. Like I remember when I had Natasha on the show and to say her name yeah. right, I'd usually say Natasha Kamawada de 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 you know, purposely <laughs> because I didn't know how yeah. to say it, but also just to try to be funny. Mm -hmm. And I've never actually said your name right before. I think I called it Mananga or something like that. So Kevin Mananga. Yeah. Jesus, God is good. Bro, we're going to jump into it. And I always call this round rapid fire, but it's never rapid. It's just going to be just a, a conversational round. I'm going to ask you a series of questions just so our listeners can get to know you a bit more, but also so that you can just, Relax, man. This is this is just us talking. It's like it's what we do anyway. The only difference mm -hmm. is being recorded, eh, man? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. And just before you go on, like, uh, okay. I just want to say to people, like, I'm really fan of of Gary D. So I'm calling Gary D. And you didn't say Jerry, so because that's my French accent. Mm. But like, you know, I'm loving what you do, like for the law. Like, you're really like on it. Like, you put like all of your life for that. Like, you're not just trying to do stuff, but you really do that for the law. And we just, I just love what you do. Like, even though small stuff for you is like, you know that's gonna go like everywhere in the world, and you just like putting all your life in it. You yeah. put your time, your energy on that, and you pray for that as well. And I just love this energy that you're doing for the Lord, and like you just, just bless me, like such a blessing for me. Um, I've been listening to your podcast sometime, not all the time, but sometime, mm. uh, to improve my English as well, so yeah. it can help me as well. But like, yeah, I should love. What you've been through, Lord, and I'm just blessed to be here. Like, such a grace to be here, such an honor for me. Yeah, Amen. Amen, man. Thanks for those kind words. Um, we're gonna jump into it. You ready? Yeah, sure. You nervous? I'm actually feel it's like a movie now, but let's go. <laughs> wow, right, bro. Um, this one might be a controversial answer for everyone that listens, but I'm gonna ask you because I think I know what you're gonna say. Who in football? Okay. There's a there's a term called GOAT. And GOAT stands for the greatest of all time. Who is the GOAT in football? Ronaldo or Messi? And why? I would say Ronaldo, like there's even like no like thing to nothing to say about that. Like but I would say Ronaldo because he's playing for like different leagues. He's playing for Portugal, he's playing in Spain, in England. Now he's playing to Saudi Arabia, so like there's nothing to debate about Ronaldo. I love Messi, the great players, all that. Like, but for me, Ronaldo, like he's just doing like oh, everywhere that he's going is the best. He scores goals, doing amazing things. Messi's good, like, but for me, like I can say Messi's the best if he like is, he play for England as well in English uh, league as well, like Ronaldo mm. or different league, like because he has been doing just all league league one of French, and he's not that great for the moment as well. So. I love Messi has been scoring. Like for me, I think that because he has played for Barcelona for such a long time and mm. it's giving like the opportunity to score goals, being like the best players. But like for me, like I love Messi, but I just say like for me, Ronaldo is just the best player because everywhere he's going, we can show that he's the best, he's doing an amazing thing, different, different background, different culture, but he's still the best and I should love it. Yeah. I suppose to ask you a question off the back of that, man, then so you would consider Ronaldo being the best, but surely do you not think that 
for someone to win the World Cup that that like in my opinion that Messi is the goat because he's won the World Cup. The World Cup for me is like it's that number one thing that you have to win in order to cement your status. Yes, I know Messi hasn't mm-hmm. gone to the Premier League because he's been faithful to Barcelona and now he's back with PSG or gone to yeah. PSG. But I just think for Ronaldo, yeah. I remember Ronaldo was on about wanting to win Champions Leagues and stuff. But mate, there's no Champions League in Saudi Arabia. Like you, you ain't gonna yeah, win. I yeah, I get what you mean, like, but I would say for me, like, you know, like Messi playing for Argentina, Argentina, I know, like, if you know Argentina, they have been a lot of good players, like, but Ronaldo is kind of the one, only one that's bring Portugal in the higher levels, like, by scoring goals, bring them, like, in different levels, but Argentina was already great because of Maradona and Di Maria, yeah. all of these players, but, like, Messi, yeah, he has been working a lot as well, but for me, I just feel like, even for, like, the, the World Cup that he's won, like, we all... Like everyone knows that they really didn't deserve it, like like other people, because they have been winning games by penalty, penalty, penalty. I know, like Messi. I think for me, Messi can do better, mm. and then I know, like that was like in his best performance or his best World Cup. And but even though they're still winning the World Cup, like for me, like it didn't mean anything for this World Cup. So like, I wouldn't say like because of that. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I respect. Your answer the same way you have to respect my decision to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but bro, um, what is your favorite meal? Oh man, um, I don't know, or, like our top two, top three. Have... Yeah, my top two would be like my first favorite meal, like it would be like an African meal, like Congolese food, like it would be uh, plantain with pondu, okay, and sausages. So it's really one of the best food for me. Mm. And then the second will be like rice, beans. No, like uh, beans for breakfast. The uh, the red beans. Yeah. With uh, with chicken. Okay. And then the third one will be like maybe I would say chips, uh, steak, and some yeah something like that. Yeah. So it is no much potato. There's no. I love Irish food, but like my one of my best, like my five best, I would say like some of the African food anyway, so. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, like, where does Shake Dog rank in that, man? Oh, no way. <laughs> shake Dogs, I would say, Shake Dogs just because, like, you know, like, we have to work as with wisdom. Shake Dog is cheap. Yeah. Big. And, like, you know, like, quicker as well. Like, but I yeah. wouldn't go for Shake Dog all the time. Yeah. But, like, I think, like, I'm in a season of my life, Lord. The Lord tried to teach me something about Shake Dogs. Mm. So, we never know. What's gonna bring me like maybe shake those and gonna come in my country anyway? But cool. no, like seriously, I would really say like because I can go out most of the time because I actually know I didn't love like to spend time in restaurants. I prefer to cook at home, yeah, and cook at my my brother or my friend' houses. We can cook like as many what we want, yeah. But eating in the restaurants, I just feel like all the time can be like so expensive. That's why like, I'm gonna go for check because it's cheap and yeah. quicker, like and chill as well. So fair, fair, um. So you're a big fan of worship, man. Um, that's one thing that I love and deeply respect about you. Um, you get your worship on every time, whether it's Wednesday, whether it's a Friday night, whether it's Sunday morning, Sunday night, whatever. And I wanted to ask you, man, do you have a favorite worship band that you enjoy listening to? Or mm, favorite worship band, like uh, I would say for the moment, like or just in general, just in just in general or the moment, does it makes no difference? Yeah. Yeah, because like for the moment I'm really enjoying like the the worship in church cultures, like but in general I'll be like more like more like um a French song or Lingala song in my country because I've been grow up listening to that all the time every morning. Yeah. Even I have a friend is Muslim, but he used to know some of the Christian songs just because of me. We used to go mm. like in school together, so I remember all the song like all of the Christian song. So I'll be like uh, the name is. Atom Senadej, so that's a French name, like they're from my country. Yeah. But other than that, I'm doing like a, I'm doing the worship in my church as well in Cockshaw because that's most of the time that I'm I'm spending my most most of my time in in church as well. So like actually really enjoying listening to to yeah. the the worship of the church as well. Cool. So man, so you mentioned at the start of the podcast that you listened to some of my episodes, right? So I'm gonna put you on the spot. From oh, from the episodes oh. that you've listened to, okay, however oh. much or not, which one's your favorite, or which one? I suppose which one maybe did you enjoy the most? That spoke to you the most, or 
No pressure. Mm, okay. Which one? I would say like Jordan Cassidy one mm. because I listened to that like that was few last year or few months ago. Like sure. I listened to that I was maybe two or three times. Okay. Because I was just going to watch you know, like just checking on your podcast and I was listening to that. Yeah. And then uh, I would say as well. Maybe yeah, just that Tasha and Warren because I was happy to see them like sharing their faith together mm. as a couple. Amen. So that was really that was really touched for me. Like so it was funny and then like really good for me to see them like just sharing their faith as a couple. Like, you know, like they're really young and then things going so fast and I just love what the Lord is doing with them as well. Yeah. But my favorite was will be like the one with Jordan and then with and then the other one with Brez and and Tasha. Awesome. Awesome. So, bro, this is the Hope Sessions podcast, right? And I know your story because we, we're brothers. We're in the same church. We, we serve in ministry together. Um, But for the next five to ten minutes or however long you feel yourself, would you let us know about your upbringing and what your journey to faith was like coming to Christ? All right. Can I say that in French? You can trust it for me or is that okay? You, you want me to translate yeah, if you can, please. Bro, I can't translate. Sorry, man. <laughs> wow. No, that's okay. That's okay. You literally okay. put me on the right. spot there. I was like, my, my French <laughs> is Je m'appelle Jerry. That's about it. Um, and then I usually say, Je suis Jesus, but that means I am Jesus, doesn't it? No, j'aime yeah. Jesus means I love Jesus, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, j'aime Jesus. Yeah, yeah. J'aime Jesus. Yeah, j'aime Jesus. Get that right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, can you ask again? Just to remember, I actually forget what you said. Like, yeah, so so let us know what what your up what your what growing up was like for you, man. And then what what was your journey like to faith? How did you come to faith oh, in Christ? Okay. Oh, like actually, like I actually just to start, like I think that was a great picture of the grace of the law, like in my life, because mm. I've been like when I grew up, like. Uh, I, I wasn't Christian, like, so my mom was Christian, she was praying, like, but I wasn't, I wasn't going only with my mom, my dad wasn't there, so I was kind of like, my mom watching my mom praying, I know what, what, uh, what she can kind of pray, like, all of that stuff, but yeah. I was just, like, I was no interest of, like, going to church, like, I was listening to people talking about Jesus, whatever, but I was just, like, so lost, like, I was just on the wall, like, trying to show off, trying to be someone that I would... I wasn't like supposed to be like try to show off stuff that I actually don't have. Yeah. And I was just like living in another life. Like that wasn't my life. Mm. And I was just then like, going to the club. Like I saw this kind of life really early. I started going to the club really early, going to see girls, all of these things, sex, all of this drinking, smoking, all of that. Really, really early because like, you know, my mom was going to work and then, you know, I can just go outside doing my stuff, all of that. Yeah, but yeah, I was yeah, I was like, I, and I was just like so lost. Like for me, it was like just normal. Like you know, what I mean, you know, like you're just doing your your life, and you think that's the right thing to do. And I was keep doing that, keep doing that, and then uh, so I, I had a, I had like some some of my cousins that we used to go in church, and like they kind of invite me in the church, like in the youth. So I was like, no, nah, I'm not gonna go. Mm. And then a few weeks later, it's like I would just like sometime on my on my room after after a big party going back to the uh, at my home like at in the morning five or six just thinking about like i was like why i'm doing all of that why i'm just drinking smoking why i'm just doing that like why and sometimes i was going to internet and then i saw some preacher uh preachers preaching about like jesus oh jesus would help you to stop doing stuff like whatever give your life mm. to jesus stop pornography all of that like and I was like, just that's just so mad. Like, and I asked the Lord, like, can you help me to stop drinking and smoking because I want to be a soccer player? That was my first prayer. I was like, God, help me to stop drinking and smoking, but mm -hmm. I can do all the stuff like just because I want to be a soccer player. Yeah. So actually, I stopped like drinking, but I, I was just smoking a small bit when I go to the club. I smoked. I was just, I, I started praying a small bit at home, like just myself. Mm. And I, I go to the club, and when I get back at home. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you protest me, anything happened. And I used to, like, drive, like, mad, like, I, I would used to drive, like, never had, like, my my travel 
listen, but I was used to drive my, my friend car all the time going outside. And I wow. never did like a nice, like something, never, eh, like there's nothing bad happened to me. Like I used yeah. to drive like all for a long time, but something bad never happened to me. Like, oh, like crush or whatever, nothing, nothing. Like, but normally this, that should happen because I was drinking, sometimes was bad coming in the morning, but that's just show all the Lord was with me all the time. Mm. And for me, it was just, that just too much. Like, you know, like some people just going for out, like, for one day and then they're dying or like i lost so many of my friends as well and i know what it's like to go and drinking and go back home and all of that but for me i was like there's something different with me i don't know what's happened but like why why just me like i'm doing bad thing but i'm still god still keeping me like never anything happened to me never go to hospital for a bad thing Not, like just all good i was like now like that that can be true like for me like yeah and then like i used to when I was at my home, that's why I'm actually, I love to worship because the Lord actually met me on my room. He touched me. I started to worship like madly. I started jumping on my room, like just myself, like worshiping God. Like, wow. because I used to listen to my mom praying and listen to worship. So I was like, you know what? Today I'm going to listen to worship. And all night I was listening to worship, like praising Lord, crying on my room myself, crying about my sin. Lord, help me to stop pornography. Help me to wow. stop so all of this stuff. And the, God was just touching in my room, meeting me on my room all the time. A few times I was just like on my room, like just sitting myself, start singing myself, like and crying, 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 crying. And then I think like, oh, that's happened because of the grace of the Lord as well. But I think my mom prays as well. But there was like a a woman was working on at my home. Mm. She was uh, she was taking care of my sister and. Like just me as well, not really take off me, but just cooking food, yeah. cleaning stuff. Like she was working for us, and she was really like a woman of praying. She was praying at five a.m. praying uh, before to go to sleep. She was praying, praying. She like she was really praying all the time. Like you can know, like she she can sleep at two a.m., but she will wake up at five to pray. Wow! And you really listen to her praying when you sleep. You will listen. She's praying in the, like on the living room, like you know. Mm. And I think that that's kind of like really touched my faith as well. I was like, I don't know why I should always pray like that. I'm going to try as well. You know, you know, like, so, yeah, I think I just saw my mom praying for so, like this woman praying for me. Her name was Mama Nana. We call her, that's mom, Mama Nana. She's, she's older and she was working for us. And I was seeing all of that happen. Like, you know, like I used to, I used to grow up in like in the street where there's like this girl all the, all the way on the street. Easily you can pay like two, to your three or five to get a girl easily wow. like you know wow. and this like i've been living to that like all my life like seeing that's all my life so that's it's not like a big thing to like to have sex with girls or like it's really easy like to go like on the street and i used to live like in the street where like there was this girl like if you have money they're gonna do anything with you like you know what i mean wow. and some of them can be like maybe she can be like 40 you don't know but she just look good she looked 25, but she's 40. Yeah. And if you don't know, you're going to go for her and then have sex with her or that, like, you know, really bad places, like, but the Lord was still keeping me, like, you know, keeping me safe, anything happened to me, mm. no sickness, no, like, none of this, like, yeah. and then I I was, I was asking the Lord, like, why, why, you know, like, you're just too good for me, like, you're just too much, like, you know, mm. you're just too much, like, oh, like, oh, like, normally I, sh I should be, like, lost at this time, like, just, but you know, like even though I was in the world, but I had a, like a good heart of yeah. people. Like, you know, even when we go for fight with my friend, we are like a gang of my friend, like going for fight or that. I can fight, but and then after that I would feel like compassion for people. I would go for them, just sorry, we know we beat you, but you know, just let forget about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I used to fight all the time, like on the street, but like I had like this compassion like on my hearts yeah. after something happened. I'd be too sad. I'd be the one that saying my friend, oh guys, come on, that's that's too much. Let go, let go now. Okay, let go, mm. you know. And I was so just so polite with parents, so polite with other people because you know, like when you're younger and you feel like you're a gangster, or whatever. Yeah. Even parents or people on the street just say, like, even though old, you say I don't care, you just say bad word to them, you know what I mean? But me, I was just different, like you know. I was even know when I saw like parents, even though I know I have to fight, but I was just so polite with them. I'll be like, you know, sorry if you touch you, sorry if you touch your car, 
sorry, you know, like I was just so polite. Like that's, oh. I, I think that's all my mom kind of teach me as well. But that was something just part of me, like you know, like that God was putting in my heart since I was young. Mm. And I just had this compassion of people all the time. And then, uh, so I asked the Lord, you know what? I'm going to stop drinking and smoking and go to the club. There's no point for me to go to the club. Like, and I just stopped doing that. And my friend was like, yeah, this guy, what do you think? What do you think? You think you're different? You think like, you know, like all of the, my friend was talking about me because I was really bad. And it was like, you just try to act like you stop everything, but that's not true. Like, you know what I mean? Wow. Start judging me. All of my friend was kind of talking about, all of my friend was talking about me. Like, so I used to be like kind of alone mm. as a Christian. And I used to go to church alone, no friend, go to church with me or anyone like just the was just talking. There were some of them or there was Christian, but they were just Christian that I didn't have faith. You know, yeah. they don't want like to be judged. Like so I was the only one I would say, like, you know, I put a tape of faith. I started putting verse on my back on, on my stories, talking about Jesus all the time. They yeah. was like, What do you think? You know, like Kevin thinks is the best, whatever. Many stuff happened, like what? Sure. The Lord was teaching me something. I was just so deep on going to church. And I started going to church. I started loving my church, actually. When I was going to my cousin's church, it was actually like, I have to get like three, ta three taxis, three buses, like two buses, sorry. Three mm -hmm. buses to go to the church, but I used to go there all the time. Wow. I was living kind of far, like 45 minutes, one hour from my church, but I was going there all the time. Yeah. And people was like, you're just mad, like, that's far, like. And sometimes, like, if there's no bus, I have to walk, like, a long way and then get another mm. bus again, like, it was just so mad. But there was, like, a, just a deep desire of God, like, even me, I didn't know what's happening, like, you know, I was just going to church, going to pray. Yeah. It was, even though I was late, it's far, like, I was just going. And one of my friends was like, you live actually far, and you always in church, always pray what's happening. Yeah. And even me, I didn't know what's happening. It was just, like, God just put a deep desire, like, on me, like, that was, mm. that, that was, like, a fire, like, all the time I'm at home praying, I was just on fire. Like yeah. I was on fire. Like just I don't know. It wasn't because I prayed too much. It wasn't because I wanted. Just because the Lord put something like really deep on me, yeah. and it was just mad because you know, like when I gave my life to Christ, there was a sweetness. There was it was just so good for me. It was like that was like my dream. Like I, yeah. I had a peace. You know, like just it was just so mad. Like and then. And then, yeah, like, and then I start serving my church in Congo, and I get back here in Ireland as well. Mm. So, yeah, long journey, like, even though I'm still young, like, it was really hard. It's still sometimes hard as well. But, like, I'm I'm actually enjoying, like, to to rest in the grace of God. Mm. No matter what's happened, I'm just enjoying life. I'm just, I love to enjoy life in Christ because I know my name is writing already in heaven. Jesus yeah. knows me, like, very well, so. I'm just like so happy all the time just because of that, like no matter what's happened. Sometimes you can feel that there's nothing happened in my life, but there's many, many stuff happened like madly, but like I just decide to look on Jesus no yeah. matter what. Like I just, there's no point for me to think about stuff, being depression because being depressed, whatever. So yeah, I think yeah, God just gave me like, such a grace to like keep my heart on him. Mm. And then, um, yeah, the journey has been, has been a little bit long as well really hard sometimes but i just i just learned to rest on jesus all the time and yeah. keep going no matter i've been feeling like all the, many to fall like many times like many 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 times and I, i'm just like david like no god there's nothing to do i'm just gonna go back to you yeah there's no there's nothing to do anyway i'm just That's gonna so come good. back to you like yeah so and I'm, I'm just coming back because this Anyone will understand what's happened to me. I'm just gonna come back to Jesus. He's the only one that's know what's happened to me. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of you have to say. Yeah, I want, there's two things you touched on, man, that I really want to, I suppose, talk about a small bit more in more in detail. And the first one was you you talked a lot about your teenage years, you know. And for a lot of us, our teenage years, one of the biggest things that people will deal with during their teenage years is feeling the need to belong to be accepted by a group of people. So you talked about how there was, you know, you you mentioned about gangs, you know, get, getting with a group of people, going to the club, drinking, smoking. You know, there was girls basically on the streets that you could get for a couple of euro. And I suppose I wanted to ask you, man, how were your teenage years? Did you find it difficult? Did you feel that there was a pressure to be with these group of people? You know, as you mentioned, you were fighting as well. Is there... What was yeah. that like, man? Do you know? Yeah, I would say like 
it wasn't the pressure, but you just want to show off. Like for me, for yeah. example, I was living the life that wasn't my life. Yeah. I was just trying, trying to act that I have like money or that, but that wasn't what I have at home. Like yeah, I had a good life. Like my mom, yeah, she has like many stuff, but like I was because I used to grow up with many of my friends that they used to have like many cars, like mm. you know, like money, and then I to try to be like them. Yeah, you know, like try to act like yeah, I have that, I have that, and that was kind of that was kind of happened in my country. Many people just trying to show off like all the time, doing like a life that's you know like your life, you're just trying to show off about like your money, about your parents, about your styles, about what you have, how many girls you have, and like you have to be the best. Like you know, you have to be like the one that have a, a, any girls, the one that's put the same like new shoes all the time, the one that is well dressed. You know, like. Yeah. And I have to fight for that, like, you know what I mean? And for me, I was like, yeah, that's my life. I was just fighting for, to be, like, to be accepted by people. Mm. And then I know, like, I've been, like, rejected by people many times. Many people was like, no, you don't want to no, say with us. You have nothing or that, like, but I was just to fight for this identity, like, to be part of other people. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I, have to, I used to fight to be, like, part of, I would say, like, rich people all the time. Yeah. Because that was kind of, the mood in my country like in my generation like you know just being the rich people the one that's paying many many drinks in the club the one that's paying for in everyone you know but even though i w- uh, i wasn't that rich but like there was just something with me that people gonna follow me just be with me but yeah. like because i was acting that i have everything but i have nothing yeah i was i was acting that you know like i'm so rich but now I wasn't that switch and I was just acting so much and you know like and that's why people was wanted to be with me mm. and some people was like me just not because because like like me like Kevin they was like me just because of what I was showing off like you no know, money or yeah. try to be rich but you know that, that wasn't me anyway that was just me like outside my home but yeah. at my home I was a different person like I was a normal person eating like everyone like living with my mom or that like yeah but like yeah i was just trying to show off all the time because uh, god actually blessed me to be like in a good school or that like but it was kind of a little bit dangerous sometimes as well because i was i was actually acting to be like them as well but mm-hmm. i wasn't like them yeah you know like you know my country when parents uh they're like uh they're like they are like really higher standard of living and then i was staying with this kind of friend like you know what i mean and then but i was just trying to show off as well trying to be like them yeah and living another life it wasn't me like it wasn't i was i wasn't free as well because yeah. i know i have to act all the time mm. when i'm at home i'm free but when i'm outside i have to act you know i have to be like on the, another person yeah. talk differently act differently dress differently spoke about my family differently mm. just to be accepted by people wow and then i would say yeah so I've been doing that all my life when I was younger. So that's why when I give my life to Jesus, many people just wasn't with me anymore because you know they was loving me for what I was showing off, not because what for what I was actually yeah. like inside yeah. of me. That's why when I give my life to Jesus, all of my friends were just gone. Yeah. They were see me like far away, but just they were just gone. Like, mm. and now I'm glad that people like me not not because of what I'm trying to show off or what I have, but just because who I am. Yeah, and there's a freedom in that. Like you know, I'm That's just right. I don't need to show off to act whatever. I'm just walking by faith and just walking with Jesus. Yeah, and yeah, I love that you said that, man. You said something there, and in a lot of ways, your your story is so similar to mine. You know, you mentioned there about how you had friends, but they weren't friends because they cared about you as a person, but they were friends because of what you could give them. You know the the mm. what they could get out of you basically. You were a product, mm-hmm. and they were the consumer basically. They just wanted whatever you had, not because of you, but because mm-hmm. of what what could basically benefit their life. Because I remember, man, when I yeah. was growing up in school, and like I was like that annoying classmate who, you yeah. know, I had multiple personalities. You know, one day I was the class clown who would throw chairs around, who would be really nasty to girls in the room. I would disrupt the teacher. Yeah. I was the teacher's worst nightmare. <laughs> Like the teacher couldn't, it was the Jerry D 
show, not the teacher's class at all, you know. And then yeah. there were some days I would come in and I'd be so nice to everyone because, you know, you it's such a, a weird thing being in your teenage years, man. I, I wouldn't go back to my teenage mm. years at all because you're really trying to find belonging. And it's weird because you literally do anything possible to get temporary acceptance. So there's a gospel rapper by the name of Lecrae, and he has a quote, and I think it's absolutely profound. He says, if you live for people's acceptance, you will die by their rejection. Do you know? Mm. And just that reality of the pursuit mm. of acceptance. Mm. And I want to ask you, because you mentioned it, you mentioned it yourself about how when you came to faith in Christ, those friends kind of left you. And did did it did it bother you or did was it just a massive moment of realization going? Yeah, they were never my friends anyway. Or what was that like, man? Going from being with a group of people and then leaving that because the Lord had come into your life and done a wonderful work, you know, and you're now on this new journey trying to find new friends and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think like for me, it wasn't that weird because when I lost my friend, actually, I really didn't realize that I lost my friend. I was just mm. so vibing, so enjoying to be in Christ. I was... Yeah. But then my friend was kind of know that I was far from them. They were like talking about me, but I wasn't talking about them at all because I was just enjoying my life with Christ. I was just yeah. so deep, just going with Christ. I was just like, it was just a sweetness like to spend time with the Lord. And I don't know what happened, but normally I I used to be like care of what people say about me. Yeah. But like when I, I came out to Christ, I was I just forget about everyone. Yeah, I was nice. living my life, you know, I would like go to... To church like walking like you know like on my in my on my country in my country like when i grew up like as but me like you couldn't go in church walking for a long distance because you know like you kind of reach you know what i mean but like me i was even i'm no i'm late there's no bus i'm gonna walk around to go to church just wow. because i just need jesus i forget about all the people yeah because you know like when you was younger like you know like you used to like show off go to the club doing stuff Mm. You know, like you're kind of this guy is really good guy, and they can take you even picture on the on the way when you go like on the streets when you ah oh, this guy is walking like now he has no car or like no like no taxi yeah. whatever just walking whatever like as everyone just because I was just focused on God like just focus mm. focus I was just I don't know what's happening it was just mad like it was yeah. just so deep for me like and I just forget I didn't do anything with that like I just forget like you know like the way. I just put my focus on Jesus and then everything just, oh, I don't know, like, was just smile, like, and then, yeah, I think that was a grace that the Lord put, like, just do for me, like, to, like, just be focused on him and forget about everything. So yeah. that was, yeah. Thank God, man. Yeah, thank God. Mm -hmm. It's because I really believe, Kev, what you've experienced during that time, man, you've experienced a godly confidence coming into your life. Whereas before you had a worldly confidence, which means that that worldly confidence was based yeah. on how well you could put on your mask and pretend and act. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Whereas now Christ has come in, man, and the Holy Ghost itself has come in and put a Holy Ghost confidence in you, which means you walk around with the identity of being a son of God. And that permeates, that. That yeah. that's liberating for me to see. I see it in your life, man. I see, like some people walk mm -hmm. with a Conor McGregor swagger. You walk with a Holy Ghost mm -hmm. swagger. You know what I mean? And come on now, come on now, come on now. That's what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like, I literally, I'm at the stage in my life, man, where when I became a Christian, man, I was either all in or I wasn't in at all because I was seeing what the gospel was doing in the life of my brother, who was a former drug addict and an alcoholic. My family was destroyed because of it, man. But I'm telling you, man, when I went all in, I was all in, and I celebrate being a Christian mm -hmm. 10 years on the 7th of July this year. And I'm telling you, man, there is no turning back. There is no, I, I can't wait. I'm t I'm only 27 and I'm not saying I wish I'm wish I were to die now, but I can't wait to see Jesus face to face. I can't wait to see love and just, again. And just you say, you say there's, there's no turning back. I just want like to remember the other people that's listening to us. Like, you know, sometimes we feel like as a Christian, yeah, when you, you have been like in Christ for 10 years, for example, you, I actually love it. And people think that everything I, I, I've been perfect. No, like mm. even though like you fall, but you're still coming back to the Lord, like because there's no way, there's no place to be anyway. That's so, right. And then that's what kind of like, like just bring people back to the Lord. Like even though you fall, like today, you know, like yeah. I'm belong to Jesus. You know, like 
I'm gonna fall sometime, but like I'm just belong to Jesus. There's no way. That's my dad anyway. I can yeah. hurt my dad, but I my dad. Yeah. So I love what yeah, you said so, there, man, because you're basically in a way you're talking about Psalm 23. We were just talking about it before I pressed record. You know, in Psalm 23, <laughs> it's a well-known Psalm. It talks about even when I go through the mm -hmm. darkest valleys. I love that because the fact that it says mm -hmm. even when shows mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the Lord is not absent in the midst of the difficulties mm -hmm. of life, but rather he's present. I thank God mm -hmm. that it says mm -hmm. even when, because I experience those dark valleys a lot. And I know you mm -hmm. do. And any, any believer in the Lord does, man, because we're mm -hmm. human. We're prone to emotions and life situations. Mm -hmm. But I love the fact that it says, even though I go through the darkest valleys, I don't need to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Comma. The comma is important because it implies mm -hmm. that something is coming afterwards. And it talks about how the Lord is Come close on, yeah. beside us. He goes on to say, your rod and your mm -hmm. staff, they comfort me and protect me. I'm just paraphrasing. Check out Psalm 23 because that's really, for me, it's been a, it's been a psalm that mm -hmm. I suppose I reflect on from time to time because it's so profound to reflect on the reality that no matter what happens, that there's a closeness in my relationship with Jesus Yes, I may not be able to see him physically, but uh, I can see the effects of him in my life, all around my life. You know, and yeah. even for you, man, yeah. you you talked about your testimony. There's an aspect of your story that I, that I resonate with. And, and you talked about the difficulty you had with pornography. And I had it as well, mm -hmm. man. And and it's it's a topic yeah. that I think that a lot of people know about. You know, it's, it's kind of like a taboo in the sense that everyone's kind of like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, pornography. Yeah, cool, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's such a, I suppose... A very intense subject but i wanted to ask you man mm. as, as you've journeyed you know you you were you were stuck in this cycle of pornography what what mm. led you to i suppose get being getting gripped by it because i know for me there was i was in a place in my life man as a 12 year old so i have a spoken word called hidden clicks which i'll include in the podcast near the end and i have a um, and in that spoken word i talk about when i was 12 years of age I was lonely, which caused me to get curious online, and mm. and that I was trying to fill that loneliness with with seeing women basically perform for my pleasure. I was objectifying them with my eyes because I thought that they could fulfill the loneliness in my life. Lo and behold, I realize mm. now it, they never could. In fact, that what I was watching on the porn and in, in pornography, all it was mm. doing was deepening the void of my life. You know, and, and I wanted to mm. ask you, what was it yeah. like for you? How did you get caught in it? Was there a particular moment or? Yeah, I would say it's, it's kind of the same issue as well. Like, you know, when you're alone, like, because I believe like as a Christian, you have to feed yourself with the word of God. And yes. when you just leave like this and you leave like the emptiness like that, if you feel with anything, the devil, the devil is going to come to fill with all the stuff, with all the mm. bad thinking, all the bad, bad temptation. But when I just feel my soul, my my spirit, the word of God, like, you know, listen to worship, all of that, like, but I wasn't doing that all of that, like, you know, I was just like chilling, you know, chilling, chilling, chilling. And when you chill so much, the, the devil is gonna be, okay, you wanna chill, let's chill together. Yeah. And it's gonna chill on your thinking, it's gonna chill with you, it's gonna come to you and you start putting on me. Like for me, because like I wasn't like big on pornography when I was on the world because I mm. was in sex all the time. Yeah. Like, but like I was kind of big when I gave my life to Jesus, yeah. Because I was kind of spending more time with the Lord at home. And when I just left a small emptiness, the devil was gonna be okay. Don't, you don't want you don't want to go outside. Yeah. Stay with me here inside, so you can watch porn. Like you know what I mean. And it was just like you know like, and then I was never in talk about anything about about pornography. I was just keeping hiding myself. Keeping yeah. Hiding. I was pushing. I was questioning what I was just keeping high pornography myself, keeping hiding. That's the that's the plan of the devil because even the Bible told us to go and speak about that to leaders, to someone like you know, yeah. that's hiring Christians or like that's that the Lord put in your life. Like and I yeah. wasn't doing that, I was just hiding my pornography life, like just listening, watching the start, fighting myself like at home, trying to stop, like and I, I was just like so lost, like yeah. and then I think like uh, as the Bible say, like you, the the word of God just set us free, mm. and I start like just asking the Lord like to put his like his word in me, listen, listen to his word. Like I used to listen to even like on my headphone the word of God just to to feed myself because yeah. you know if I leave the emptiness, the the devil's gonna put something else. That's right. So I have to feed myself with something, mm. something bad or something great, and then like so I used to like kind of being open what's happened to my leaders as well like you know like yeah you know that's happened to me 
and he's gonna give me something. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know because sometimes like you're gonna hide your stuff, but maybe some someone maybe older than you, or like just around you, is going through the same thing or yeah. has been fighting against this thing like for a long time. And then, so I'm just told you know what? I've been there like you as well. Yeah. And you don't need to hide this. Just because even the Bible say like when you you say what's happened, like you give you actually talk about your sins to one of your border. Is actually set you free because you kind of yeah. release what is inside of you. That's right. So when I'm, I start, I start like I just I know the, the verse in French, but in English just so well. Like so like and then I just start like sometimes just speaking what happened mm. not to everyone like of course yeah. but just to my leaders and then like just finding confidence to say what's happened because you know sometimes like even when I when I we're in church we kind of have a name and we kind of we don't want to lose this name we kind of become like hiding stuff maybe you're going to pornography going to like bad thing but you know that you already serving the church or doing something you know i don't want to go to my leaders going to someone talk about yeah. like i'm going to this scene because it's going to be bad you know yeah. but like if you just live in this kind of scene you're going to live in this scene for a long time it's better to talk about that to someone than just keeping that for yourself that's right and i was like that as well i was keeping just for myself keep for myself because i want to keep my name you know i'm serving in church i want to yeah. keep my name but but you know like i can i, I could lose my salvation just because i want to keep my name but mm -hmm. i'm still watching pornography at home yeah and acting like everything is, is all right so actually for me I, actually, I just opened this kind of i opened the door for the devil when i was kind of always empty didn't fit myself with anything yeah i wanted something new but i wasn't feeding myself and then uh you know, like I was just fighting with bad thinking, that thought all the time because you know, like all the stuff that I used to do, like on the past, was coming on my head, coming back, coming back, coming back, yeah. coming back all the time. Mm. And it's actually a fight, like it was a big fight. Yeah. And then, like it was just so hard, like I was fighting with my thoughts all the time, or bad thinking coming, yeah. like temptation, girl, this all of that, like. And then the Lord like just set me free, like, and then I used to pray, ask the Lord, like, just please, I just want to stop. There's no way for me like, to serve you like that, being like that. And then um, I kind of start like, you know what, I'm gonna be involved in church, mm -hmm. pray, spend time more with God because the actually like where what you do in your daily life like depend on where you're gonna go. Like for example, me like I, my daily life is. To go to church, pray at home, spend time with the Lord, speak up yeah. with Jesus in the phone. Like I can spend, I can go to play soccer as well, or that. Like, but yeah, yeah. I always fit, I always fit my my soul, my spirit with something that's yeah. actually great because I know myself that bad stuff's gonna come anyway. Yeah, but it's like even though it's now it's gonna come, and I always remember the word of God, like the Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said, the Bible said. And those things happen when you feed yourself with the word of God. Mm. And that was kind of me. So I actually opened my, I opened the door to devil to just when I was empty. Yeah. And then now I just when I know I've I, I have nothing to do, I'm empty. I have to do something just, you know, like feed myself. And I would say like now, like just the grace of God that's keeping me, you know, that's like right. in in life as well, because as the Bible says in Hebrew twelve. Is the actor, uh, the author, and the finisher for faith. Yeah. So he's the one that doing the work. I'm just waiting on his grace, and he's the right. one that doing the work. Like so, mm. yeah. I love man. What you're saying there is just it's so profound because definitely, I, I I think for everyone, definitely for girls and guys who have journeyed with the reality of pornography and been defeated by its grip, um, there's such a strong element of shame that can really rest upon your mind and your heart for a long period of time. You know, there's a Psalm, uh, one of my favorite Psalms, Psalm 34, verse 5. It says, those that look to him uh, mm. will be radiant with joy. No shadow mm. of shame shall darken their face. And I remember for me, man, this moment that I was wrestling with pornography as a young Christian, man, just, I didn't really think, I didn't really believe, I suppose, I could ever get free from it. I just thought it would always be like my side me you know in my life and i remember my pastor i sat down in his office one day and he said to me he said okay he said Jay, he gave me an exercise to do and i thought it was actually stupid at the moment i was just like oh here we go another exercise it's just gonna leave me feeling more defeated 
but he said this to me, man, and, I'm, and I'll never forget it because I, I use it in my own life in certain aspects when I'm going through difficult times. He said, name the addiction or problem. I said, okay, pornography. He said, say it a few times. So I said, pornography, pornography, pornography. He said, okay, in light of that problem, start talking about who God is. I said, okay, God, he created the world. He walks on water. He calms the storms. The grave couldn't mm. hold him. The mm. You know, and, and in light of weighing up your problem, in light of who Jesus is, I'm not joking. For mm. me, that just puts mm. everything into perspective. And then, yeah. and then you hear about, like, you know, come to me all who will really, and I will give you rest. And it's interesting, man. Mm. And I've only discovered this recently because I was looking at it. And in that passage, that chapter, right, where... It starts with uh, John the Baptist being in prison. Okay. He's in prison mm -hmm. because um, he was basically challenging Herod for some adultery, I believe he mm -hmm. was involved in. And so he was in prison for the gospel, right? You know, he was standing, making a stand for Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in this mm -hmm. moment, he was, he was in a prison, but he was feeling doubt. He was, he was, he was sent asking his disciples to go talk to Jesus and ask him, are you the one or should we wait for another? Mm -hmm. And then Jesus mm -hmm. sends word in the midst of John being in his prison to say, I am the Messiah. I'm not going anywhere, you know, and he reminded John in the midst of John's prison mm -hmm. that what God is still doing, he is still on the move. He is still transforming mm -hmm. lives. He is mm -hmm. still setting people free. And I think that's mm -hmm. so profound for us because oftentimes mm -hmm. when we're in a prison or when we're in a problem, the world becomes so small that we get so, how would I say enclosed in ourselves and mm. and you really think that everything's falling apart but when you look at the grand scheme of things the one who was mm -hmm. holding you in his hand you mm -hmm. know the one who was close to you Psalm 23 you know the one who lifts shame off your head Psalm 34 mm -hmm. right suddenly your your perspective changes and your ability mm. to to I suppose process or hand over your problems to Jesus changes yes, that's been a life changer for me man um, like weighing up what is your problem? What is your issue? Okay. And who is Jesus still? You know, Hebrews talks about it, man. He is yesterday, today, and forever the same. So who he mm. was to you in the good times is the same to who he is to you in the difficult times. You know, so you mm. can claim mm. that as a promise, as children of God. And I know that's been definitely helpful for me, man. You know, even not a, like, because the Lord has absolutely delivered me from the grip of pornography and um, through Hallelujah. walking with my God. pastors, through naming the issue and through just journeying with the Lord, as you said, getting full of the word, allowing the Holy Spirit to transform you. And, mm -hmm. and the, like, you know, I've, I've, even in my spoken word, I say that um, the gospel has a profound grip on me where once pornography held me, you know, so there's a, there's a, mm -hmm. there was a contrast happening there, man. And it's, I'm so mm -hmm. thankful to know that even in the midst of, of a hidden struggle, because no one knew about it. It was a secret thing for me. I, th I thought I could disguise it well by going incognito on a computer and all. You know, you mm. get very, how would I say, you get very good at dressing up sin or getting very um, mm -hmm. clever with how you disguise stuff, you know, to uphold your image. And I'm so thankful, man, that I don't mm. need to hold myself anymore, that I come yeah. to him weak sure. in need of his grace hourly, not daily, hourly, man, sure. you know, and I'm so thankful to know sure. that. You, you've had a similar journey to me in that sense, and, and we both get to testify together that the enemy no longer Praise has a hold on us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, man. Yes. Absolutely. As it might. Bro, it's been so good to talk to you because we, we talked about, I suppose, in a sense, very vulnerable topics. You know, and I mm -hmm. thank God for that, man, because if you really want to give people hope, you have to talk about the reality of life, which we have. But we've also talked about the reality mm -hmm. of Christ in our life. Do you know, and mm -hmm. I, I think the probably the most fitting way to close out this podcast episode. Could I ask you to pray, and yeah, of I suppose pray for yes for the listeners, but pray for those maybe in their teenage years dealing with these issues, and even for those mm -hmm. no matter what the age who are dealing with the grip of pornography. Pray, pray a word of healing, man, that the Lord would set them free. He would encourage them. Mm -hmm. He would lift their head. So, would you yes. close in prayer for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just before closing, I just want to remember someone that's. Yeah, like we can be, we are a Christian or that, like, but it's only the grace of God that sustains us, like, to, to stay Christian. Mm. It's not like our action, it's not what we're doing, it's not because of, we are so good, because we are dressed well, yeah. we are drippy, because we are like beauty, Amazon. It's, no, it's nothing about us, it's only the grace of God. 
Yeah. If me and Jay we were actually here, it's just because of the grace of the Lord. That's right. So and then sometimes we just have to accept this grace. That you know the grace is enough for me. I don't want to. I don't need to fight about that anymore because yeah. someone already fights and someone win the battle already, and the victory is already won on the cross. So I don't need to to look for 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 a victory anywhere mm. else because the victory is already on the cross. So I just praise God for that. Like so, yeah. I'm gonna pray now. Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this uh, amazing world. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you're here. You're the best person ever, Holy Spirit. You help us going through bad or good thing. You're already there, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, you send us the Holy Spirit to help us in mm. to journey every day, to to being a good Christian, to spend time with you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. You help us by your Spirit. It's not by mind, not by power, but, but by your Spirit. So, Lord, I just pray loud now, Jesus. You know, like every listen, be, people that listen to this podcast, I pray that Holy Spirit will have your way. You mm. will touch them, Holy Spirit, right now. Shari, yeah. by, by the sukra. Right now, you will glorify Jesus in our family. You will glorify, you will glorify Jesus in our life. Yeah. You will glorify Jesus no matter what language, no, no matter what background, no matter what country. We know, Holy Spirit, you are there and you can move. Everywhere you can touch life, Holy Spirit. Have your way, have your way. Oh, set people free. Oh, free from pornography, free from bondage, free from prison, free, 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 free. Oh, we yeah. speak the name of Jesus over every po- people are still watching pornography. We speak mm, the name Jesus, of Jesus and we speak freedom. Jesus right now. Freedom. Yeah. We speak yeah. freedom in Jesus' name. Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. have your way. Palubra divide sin, tahobra divide kosh, redele sipra dosha, in Jesus' name. Oh, we praise you and we magnify your name because you are the one that's doing that. It's not because of my prayer. It's not because of Gary prayer. It's because you use us today to set someone free for your glory, Lord Jesus. Yeah. I I pray, Lord Jesus, this, someone is going to listen to this podcast and going to set free, Jesus, by your mm. word, by your power, by your spirit, Lord Jesus. Amen. Or your word set us free, Lord Jesus. The same way you did with Gary, you did with me, you will do the same with someone that's going to listen today, yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name. And we say, Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory for what you're going to do. Reveal that something you already happened right now and you're going to do something great again, Lord Jesus, for your glory, Jesus. Have your way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us by your Spirit to system, to stay, to stay at your feet, Lord Jesus. We are full of weaknesses. We are full of failure. We need your grace. We need you. We need your help every day in our life. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love again, Lord Jesus. You're so good to us. What a God. And what a, what an honor to be called child of God, to yes. be a child of God and to serve you, to be part of what you're doing in this world, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship mm-hmm. you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Kev, thank, thank you so much, man. Thank you for, I suppose, coming on and, and being so vulnerable about the reality of the journey you've been on. Um, I've been refreshed just sitting here, I suppose, facilitating the conversation. Thank you for being my friend. You know, I really mean that, man. The, our conversations, yes, we, we tend to talk a lot about sports, but we also talk a lot about the Lord, which I'm so thankful for, man. It's effortless to be your friend mm-hmm. because we just have a lot of, I suppose, common things that help us with our com- conversations, man. But um, I really believe that today has been very special to talk about this topic. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and then like you know i actually like so i feel so no like to be part of that like you know mm. because that was kind of my first time to kind of shower like in deep in this situation of my life like being pornography being this kind of stuff yeah and then i just praise the lord for this testimony because you know like there's no testimony without a test so That's if right. there was a test in my life just because the lord wants to give a testimony so mm. and i pray like i know like someone maybe listen like you're going to this kind of test but there's a testimony just ahead of you and just keep going Amen. and then yeah the lord is just so good to us and then you know like i just i'm just so honored to be your friend and then to know you i'm so blessed to have this church to have you as a friend yeah. i'm just so blessed you know sometimes we can forget about stuff but like you know god is is answering prayer is answering prayers i used to pray like when i first come in Ireland to be to have like Christian friend, mm. but like you know, like now I I like I have like a lot of Christian friend, like by good yeah. grace, and you know, God is really a good God, is listening to us, you know what we need, 
yeah. and in, is in control. And I just want to say to someone, like, you know, it's okay to fall, but it's not okay to stay on the ground. If you yeah. fall, just stand up and go walk again. Like, you know, that's right. that can happen, but there's no, you don't, you know, not stay up on the ground. Just stand up and then walk with God. The Lord is so good. His grace is renewed every morning. And then, you know, just keep going. And then, yeah, yeah praise God. Amen, man. Amen. And for those of you that have listened, thank you for tuning in yet again mm -hmm. don't forget to like share and subscribe but also as this episode mm -hmm. ends i will include the video um the audio version or the video depending on what platform you're watching on or tuning mm -hmm. in from for a spoken word that i read called hidden clicks uh, until next week guys mm -hmm. take care god bless and don't forget the hope is to life as oxygen is to the body take care hey can i tell you a story it started when i was 12. i was depressed and lonely and I was seduced by the lie of what it could do for me. Video after video, I was quickly immersed into a fantasy. It's addictive. Oh, of this I'm sure. Video after video, all it does is leave you longing for more and more. And all I wanted to do was get rid of the loneliness. But instead I became a slave and began to open up less. Objectifying women, I was a total mess. And I was a prisoner to the things that I couldn't even get off of my chest. See, because with porn, you no longer see the individual as a human. With your eyes fixated on the screen, to you they're simply an instrument that somehow exists to serve you and your amusement and satisfy your personal gratification. Like what an illusion. Because it's a multi-billion dollar industry, daily robbing millions of people of true intimacy. Men, women, Boys, girls, this is the reality. Whether you realize it or not, we live in a sex addicted society. And that individual on the other side of the screen is actually an individual who belongs to a family. But I'm no longer trapped. I'm actually free. Because pornography, the gospel powerfully broke your hold on me. And I got freedom in this area by bringing it into the light. Admitting I'm a sinner and I'm in need desperately of Christ. You know, I gave him my life. I called out to him and he gave me his life. You know, the wrath of God was poured on the Son of God so you and I could belong to the family of God. What a sacrifice. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Hope Sessions podcast with me, Jerry D. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're tuning into it from. This greatly helps to spread the word about the podcast but also to encourage other people to check it out for themselves. Um, until next week, take care, God bless, and don't forget, hope is to life as oxygen is to the body. Take care.